Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay, coming to you from Tufts University in Boston. In the recent U.S. midterm elections, one of the hot-button issues in many parts of the country was the issue of undocumented workers, some people call illegal immigrants. What effect does it have when people, because of their status, are willing to work for sometimes even below minimum wage? But the question that rarely gets asked in this debate is why are so many people from south of the border here? And what happened to the economies of countries like Mexico? And did, in fact, U.S. policy have something to do with it? Now joining us to talk about that question is Timothy Wise. He's director of the Research and Policy Program at the Global Development and Environment Institute at Tufts University in Boston. So why, why do so many people head north looking for work? Well, Paul, as I think it's pretty well known now, the, uh, the economies of uh, some of our main trading partners, such as Mexico, have not fared as well as people had hoped under uh, trade agreements like the North American Free Trade Agreement, now 16 years um, in operation. The job creation that took place in Mexico under that model, as we showed in a recent uh, Carnegie Endowment report, was disappointing to say the least, and most economists recognize that. Now, we, we were told that the, the thing holding Mexico back was too much government public ownership, too much government regulation, so free up the economy, get the government out of the way, and productivity would go up and prosperity, especially with Mexico having so much oil, there would be great prosperity and that would be the, the solution to the Mexican economy's problems. No, beyond that, they, they promised, the promise of NAFTA was that Mexico would be able to export goods and not people. That was the explicit promise at the time of NAFTA, and it just hasn't been true. Manufacturing, which saw huge growth in the initial years of NAFTA, actually generated very few jobs because uh, it destroyed as many manuf almost as many manufacturing jobs as it created. How? And well, by by foreign companies coming in and out competing, or buying up, or um, or uh, bringing their products in and putting local firms out of business. So that put that lost jobs. And then the new firms that came in um, created some new jobs. But my area is agriculture, and that's the area where, um, even if there have been small, small gains in employment and manufacturing and in the service sector, the agricultural sector has just been decimated. NAFTA liberalized trade, which allowed uh, U.S. goods, mainly meats and grains, to flow um, without tariff, inter tariff uh, protection into Mexico and compete directly with uh, pr uh, producers who are producing things like corn, not just for the big global marketplace, but for their own consumption. Talk a little bit about a particular company that seems to be on play both sides of the border and done fairly well, Smithfield, which is the, one of the largest pork producers and brings us lovely pork sausages and swine flew to boot. How does this mechanism help them? I was asked once at a conference, well, if the far if farmers in the U.S. and farmers there don't win from NAFTA, who does? Take Smithfield, please. They benefit not only from U.S. agricultural policies, um, but from labor policies, environment policies, immigration policies, um, and trade policies. Obviously, NAFTA opened the border to their pork so they could sell their pork cheap in, the United, in, in Mexico, and they did. Pork, import, pork exports increased 700% from the United States to Mexico. But they were getting all their feed grains cheap at a discount rate because of U.S. agricultural policies, which created overproduction and forced down corn and soy costs. So that's 65 percent of your operating costs if you're uh, fattening hogs. And so they were getting cheap feed for their hogs. They ex NAFTA liberalizes investment so they can invest their own capital to expand their operations in Mexico, and they become what is now the biggest pork producer in Mexico on uh, plants like that one in, in Veracruz that is suspected of having uh, some relationship to the swine flu epidemic. What are they feeding their hogs down there? They're feeding the imports of corn and soy um, that come in liberalized under NAFTA and come in below the cost of production. So again, it's a subsidy, to an implicit subsidy to Smithfield down there. Um, no environmental regulations are enforced either in the United States or in, um, in Mexico for these very polluting industrial hog operations. And then, as if that's not enough, um, all the people pushed out of jobs in Mexico in corn, in soy, in pork, all those small-scale producers who can't compete with, uh, with the imports or with Smithfield directly, need to look for work. And where do they find work? Well, some of them find them at the Veracruz facility in, 
in Mexico of Smithfield, and some of them come across the border and work at the Tar Heel plant in in uh, in North Carolina. Smithfield plant. In the Smithfield plant, and with a lax enforcement of labor laws, um, is yet another um, way that the policy supports um, this kind of playing off what amounts to in in the case of Smithfield and in the U.S. a playing off of uh, immigrant workers against uh, workers born here undocumented immigrants against documented immigrants, and that stalled a unionization effort at, at the Tar Heel plant for years. Fortunately, their persistence and a massive corporate campaign led to a union victory there um, in 2008, or a historic union victory. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.